that okay now i'm recording and i will send you this okay and then we'll go back yeah, to yeah. here and we'll edit yeah. nicely because i know where we yeah, are yeah of course okay, here we go. Here. all right sure. so i'll give you this okay and i'm going to show you so you just so you just saw mary who's now lost 168 pounds right uh -huh. and that's why this thing works so well <laughs> hang on one second stand up for a second <laughs> since you did this i want you to see why spin gym works so well check this out that's in your thumbs by the way. that's my boy go 10 9 oh. So now all my fitness experts, bring it down a little bit lower, stand up really tall. What do you see? So all of his pecs are fine. You see delts fine. You see ab engage. I'm gonna turn you around. It's gonna use, just gonna use you, right? No, no, stay right there. Just right there, just pull on tensely. All the strangulations in his shoulders. Look at his entire back. How deep is that firing? I'll tell you, all the way through his entire body. So I have now sold 2.1 million of these things. So that was Joshua. Do you see that everything fires? This has got more resistance than you would ever imagine. And so you do one song. You give me three minutes, my girl. You do that every day for three weeks. Everything changes. One no, song. I gotta give me one. I gotta get one for me and my husband. <laughs> you know, where, where, now where do you live? I live in California in the right. valley. We've uh -huh. got. I was. I had a house in Van Nuys for twenty years. We've got to get you one. Something yeah. tells me purple's probably your favorite color. I even. Yeah. I even blinged one out. I love this so much. I like fuchsia. You do this, and I will tell you, it works on your posture, it works on your arms, it works on your abs. It's under $40. It's called a spin gym. And spin I was just gym. on Home Shopping okay. Live this morning. We sold a couple thousand this morning. It's become crazy popular because you do it at your desk. You do it if you're in a wheelchair. You do it if you're a fitness model. You do it if you're obese and don't want to do much of anything. But you go, you know what? Here's what I did to COVID. I just punched it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to punch it. <laughs> You should give every rioter a spin gym and tell them to just stand there until they pass out and not have to break anything. Ooh, cool. Right. Doesn't that just feel good? Raven, let me tell you. Hey, if, you I, if this doesn't gym, lift and gym up today, I'm telling you what, because I know everybody wants to get yeah, out there. We got, we all, just, let's, just, let's just box it out. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. But this is, there's a tension to this thing. It feels crazy good. It gives you this sense of energy and accomplishment. Then you lean back a little bit and you get those abs. You know, girl, I pushed out two seven-pound twins. Two seven, <laughs> huge belly, and at 42. And I got to tell you, I got my shape back because of this thing. It was very funny. One, you always need somebody in your life who believes in you. You got to find that person. Uh, my fiance's son, one of his best friends, just jumped in front of a truck yesterday and killed himself. He's 18 years old. Um, <laughs> He was gay. Either his parents didn't agree with him, didn't believe in him, who knows what. But he couldn't see a way out because mm -hmm. one person didn't really stand for him. I got to tell you something. You've got to either be that person or seek out that person who believes in you because you can hang your, your little hook on anybody's star. I tell a story that when I was in college, I was a very ugly little girl. I had a badly broken nose for most of my childhood and buck teeth. I had eight years of braces. I had frizzy hair. I was a mess and overweight, and I was really smart. You know what that made me? Completely unsociable. I graduated college with two degrees in three years. Most mm -hmm. people do one in four. I had no social life, right? Senior year, my nose gets fixed, and uh, actually it was my dad's doctor. My dad was in a horrific accident and felt really bad for me, so he fixed my nose, which is, turns out to be one of the best things that ever happened to me. Who knew, right? That that one little thing would change my world. Mm -hmm. uh, we're great for Kylie Jenner, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was, I auditioned for the senior play. I'd never gotten the lead in anything at all. I would always get cast as like townsperson number three. I didn't have a name. And he was doing As You Like It, Shakespeare's largest female character he ever wrote. And I auditioned and I go to the call board. And I'm expecting to see, you know, chorus or, you know, the Joker or whatever. My name's not even there. And my mm. little self-esteem in my head said, oh, you didn't even get that, did you? And I remember that moment because I was so convinced my limiting belief about who and what I was I look at the very top to see who got the lead in this play. And you know what's up there, Raven? My yeah. name. I went to the acting director and I said to him, uh, I'm sorry, this is my senior year. I don't understand. I don't even think I can do this. Why would you ever give this to me? That's probably a stupid thing to say, right? And he mm -hmm. sat me down and he looked at me and he said, girl, he said, you are so complex. You have such a voice and such a passion, such a depth. And you're gonna be my ideal Rosalind. And the crazy mm. thing about Professor David Richmond, 
Mm -hmm. He was 100% legally blind. Mm. He didn't see anything about my face or my body. He didn't care. He mm. saw what I always believed was a little essence of who I was. I thought I was that special, but no one ever believed it. And I kept not believing it either. One mm. guy, he gave me that opportunity. I flourished in it. And it was enough for me to tell my parents, you know what? I'm not going to be a lawyer. I'm going to New York mm. City. I'm going to be an actress. And I don't know how I'm going to make it. I ended up living on a four-story walk up over a Chinese restaurant, got the lead in my first feature film called Splatter University, worked on Broadway mm -hmm. with Christopher Reeve. And I'll tell you what, I never looked back. I never looked back on the fact that most people will never see you for who you are. They'll see the mm -hmm. color of your skin. They'll see your hair. They'll see your age. They'll see your weight. Fuck them. They don't see you. <laughs> the one guy who saw me only saw what was inside of me. Yeah. He heard the timbre of my voice. He could hear the pain and depth of my soul. Mm -hmm. That led me to believe that we don't ever really know who people are. So mm -hmm. you don't let somebody else to dictate who you are. I mean, I've mm -hmm. auditioned for a lot of things. I've been rejected a whole lot, trust me. And I kept having to find my next David Richmond, somebody who believed in me. My fiance, mm -hmm. me more than anything else, he thinks that the world begins and ends with me. And I didn't find him until I was 57 years old. Yes, he's younger than me. And yes, I really enjoy the people who tell me, oh, he's only after you for your money. Yeah. You know what? You guys got to knock this shit off. Stop telling us what you think. Yeah. Blind, I don't care because you can't see, can you? And yeah, I stop being see. in the Kool-Aid when you don't know the mix is what they used to say. <laughs> That's just it. You, you know what? And I've devoted my life. I actually do a little training called Forbes Factor. Because I'll tell you what, I've been through so much pain. When Dexter got murdered, I have a ticket on Flight United 93 on 9-11. On we lost nine guys that day. My Everybody I went to high school with, including my brother, they all worked at a firehouse a quarter mile north of the World Trade Center. Mm. And then two years ago, on October 1st, with my little iPhone and my beautiful fiance, I walk out on the balcony of Mandalay Bay a minute, and a minute to take a picture. And we hear pop, pop, pop. The guy 10 floors below us is killing the people on the right at the concert. And I have a bird's eye view and I record oh. the entire thing. I watched oh, that massacre yeah. live. We were in lockdown for 11 hours. I got to mm. tell you, lockdown in your house watching Netflix is nothing like lockdown thinking somebody's going to kill you. Or I know, and I think about that. I'm like, everybody's having a fit because they have to stay at home because they're saying, be safe, stay at home. And then you hear people say, I want to get out. I want to get out. I want to get out. I understand we all feel kind of caged in. But as I watch those people, you know, doing the riots, the first thing I'm looking at is just a few people with masks. And I'm looking at all these people close together. And I'm thinking, OMG, these people are going to get sick. Well, I'll tell you what, it's an interesting social experiment. So number one, if you're worried about being locked in your house, you haven't spent enough time creating a, an environment that works for you. I love- Oh, that's a good point. That's I love a, my house. Yeah. In fact, the big thing that I had to do a week after this happened is I hadn't gotten any backyard furniture. And I'm like, I have a cute pool out there. It was just kind of empty. And I remember saying to myself, I've got, and I didn't go to the store. I found it on Craigslist. I found a great deal. And I said, I really need to make this that wonderful, so I can go outside. By the way, you can go outside. That's the other thing. Go out, get vitamin D. These people are telling you to lock in your home are weird. I just, yeah. we make it now. Here's the social experiment. By the way, is your house feng shui? Is it nice? Do you love the people you live with? This, like you said, is a cosmic pause. Yeah. If I've got a clicker, Netflix, and a bathtub, I am a very happy girl. <laughs> Me too. I'm learning, too. <laughs> I'm learning things on the internet I didn't know. I'm watching movies yeah. I'd always wanted to see. I've made a puzzle with my kids. I'm learning to, what's wrong with this? And by the way, you know what? COVID is your fault if you're listening to this. I know it because you prayed for it. No, no, seriously, you prayed. I heard you. I don't want to go to work on Monday morning. Guess what? You don't have to. Now you don't I have want to. more time oh, with my kids. Dear God, can I spend more time with my kids? And now you're bitching that you got to spend more time with your kids. Yeah, yeah. So well, that's been a beautiful thing, though. People, I'm hearing people say, um, Forbes, that, you know, they've been so busy working, the husband and wife, they usually kiss the kids to bed, you know. They have somebody taking care of them during the day, and now they're actually playing games together, putting pu puzzles together, being there all day. Well, Raven, I'm going to, but I'm going to throw a wrench in that. Mm -hmm. Because of the work that I do, I'm privy to a lot of people who've been abused mentally, physically. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, a good portion of the people who get to stay at home and get to see their kids, and it's wonderful. But think about all the kids. The only, their only escape from drugs and sexual abuse is school. It, 
Oh. We don't have that, and we don't yeah. see them. We don't hear their little voices. We don't know how terrified they are at night when dad or grandpa or whoever is crawling into bed with them. And I will tell you, there's going to be a bad, bad ramification. In a couple of years, we're going to hear all of these stories of people. They didn't close the liquor store. Apparently, that's essential. What the? F I, I just <laughs> believe me. My language gets really bad when I start talking about this because my head goes, "No, you should shut off your." That should not have been. You know what's going to happen. About that too. I'm like, that should have been the first thing that they shut down. But we don't do that. So here's the social experiment. <laughs> you like I just witnessed all of these people doing exactly what we just spent the last three months not doing. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you feel if the COVID rate doesn't go up? Could we all mm -hmm. shelter in for no reason? That's interesting. So I'm kind of waiting to hear. I kind of like looked at the numbers of Minneapolis. Is it going up? Because if it does, I understand it. If it doesn't, we got a problem. What's this been about? Correct. But what would cause, okay. That's a whole nother show. Because <laughs> I got so many questions behind that one, Forbes. Oh mm -hmm. my God. Okay. It comes down to personal responsibility. It comes down to finding what your joy is. And you know, I do some exercise with people that I would love your audience to think about. Ray, will you play a game with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to ask you what you want. Two rules of the game. Okay. Can't say I don't know, and you can't repeat okay. your answer. Got it? Okay. okay. All right. What do you want? I want bliss. What do you want? I want to be totally happy with not a lot of stress and just kick back and relax as I'm ease into my senior, 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 senior years. <laughs> what do you want? I want my husband and I to just go on a beautiful beach with lots of water, probably somewhere in Hawaii, and sip on Mai Tai. What do you want? I want to be set up in such a great way that, you know, from 70 to 104, my automatic money machine is just rolling in. What do you want? I want my hat wraps that I invented to be on home shopping and Riley to be selling them on the show. Oh my God, oh, I love that. Oh, 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 all right. So and they're reversible. We gotta talk later, oh, girl. We gotta talk. No, we totally gotta talk. I'm totally pitching this. <laughs> all right, so here's the thing. You might- Did I play the game okay? <laughs> Actually, I think you win. I've asked thousands of people that question. I ask it because when I first got really asked it, I blew the answer. I couldn't figure it out. And the guy I, who asked me couldn't give me anything in the movie industry kind of made fun of me because what happens is some people will they'll say oh, i want financial freedom i just want to help other people you girl you answered it from a place of wisdom and strength or then i got people going i have everything i want no you don't no i have everything i want no you don't you said like i want to go with, on the beach with my husband i want to wake for me personally i want to wake up every day and have my man tell me even if my mascara is down my face and my hair is all frizzy it's and gorgeous. my gorgeous <laughs> just rolls over and says, baby, I love you and you're beautiful. I want that every day for the entire go. rest of my life. Most people can't come up with that. They don't know yeah. what they want. Yeah. And if you don't know what you want, you get leftovers. Because those of us who do know what we want, yeah. we're taking all the good stuff. So my yeah. advice to you is learn to dream better. Learn mm -hmm. to dream bigger. Do not listen to all the little negative people around you because they will bring you down. There yeah. is a level of people. My friend, you are a motorboat. And listening to programs like this and hanging out with spiritual beings and just enjoying your life gives you the gas. But if you but if you got all the gas, you're trying to go and you're going, but you're not going anywhere, look behind you. It means your anchor is stuck in some mud. Ooh, and you need to find a coach or a mentor or someone to go with a big wire cutter and cut that. Otherwise, you're going to always feel like you should have been going, but you never get anywhere. Yeah. And, my hope and that's is, a sad I'm, feeling. I've been there. That's I a sad feeling to, to be stuck. Mm -hmm. I want you to listen to me go, Forbes. You are an inspiration. You've touched my heart and you've allowed me to move forward. That's what I want in life. I want every day for someone to tell me that I inspire them. And thanks to the work I do and YouTube and Facebook, people send me messages all the time. I wake up in the morning and I get the, I got up some this morning. That's such a joy. That's what I wanted. Something else that I wanted that people laugh at that I don't care. I'm a magician. My dad was a magician. I love doing magic tricks. I love doing this thing. I want to be told every day that I'm amazing. I'll tell you what, people often say, oh my God, it's the amazing Forbes Riley. You know why they say it? Because I wanted it. There you go. You're speaking it in existence. And I so get that. I, I know so you do. It. I feel it. Yeah, you feel it. We're, we're sisters from another mister for sure, you know. 
I can tell because just you got that same spirit that I do. You know, I, I'm a go-getter. I don't mind failing forward. And I teach my clients and, you know, suggest to my viewers to get comfortable with failing forward and get out of perfection stage because we wait all our life to do things. Just get out there and try it. I mean, if it doesn't work, so what? Right. Tweak it and keep going. You know, you talk about unlimited beliefs and I want to show you something real quick in the audience that, that those of you that haven't seen this. In 2016, I got an email when I was in Hawaii saying you were nominated for the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. I'm like, me? Yeah, right. So I ignored it and they kept sending me this email and then they say, look, Barack Obama, President Obama will be getting out the office soon. We don't know if this is even going to be around when Trump's in the office. We need for you to contact us right away. And look at this, Riley. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is congratulations, my girl. But listen, be, what I, the reason I wanted to bring it up is because you talked about the limiting beliefs and stuff. And I never really believed it till I walked across the stage. It wasn't about, um, President Obama is one of his business ambassadors that pinned me and said on behalf of the president, you know, the, what was he, 43rd or whatever, president of the United States, thank you for your service. And so I got this award for my broadcasting service. Now listen, I reached out and I told a couple people that I mentored with that I really thought a lot about. And they're like, oh, okay. And then I reached out to a couple other people privately and they're like, okay. And so I felt unworthy of having it. Been there, been there. Isn't that, and it breaks your heart, doesn't it? Cause you're like thinking, I know they're gonna be rooting for me. Right. And so I never shared, I never really celebrated that moment and it'll never come back again. And so I always speak to my audience and people say, celebrate your moment. Don't let nobody give you permission to celebrate because it doesn't come back. And, and I could have had a great time celebrating that. I think I posted it on Facebook once. <laughs> That's all right. You're celebrating it. In the, you know what? Now, here's the thing. So life happens for you, not to you. The yeah. reason that you didn't get to do that is- I like that. Say that again. That was powerful. Well, it's very, very it. important. People mm -hmm. say all the time, it happened for a reason. You know what? Mm -hmm. That only means that might be somebody up there keeping score and I don't believe that anybody cares that much. I don't think things happen for real. I think things happen, you find the reason. Life uh, happens for you, not yeah. to you. Uh, Bad things will happen all the time. They always do. You that, don't yeah, figure out- Yeah, I've occurrences. We can't stop that, yeah. No, but you get, if you figure out what the reason can be, it makes uh, sense. Let me tell oh, you something. Okay. Joshua oh. got hit by a motorcycle, shattered his career along with his ankle. And it's devastating. But it also reminded him that he's the most brilliant 3D graphic artist and editor. And he's been stuck behind a computer now, remembering that's what he went to college for. Instead of spending two hours in the gym, looking absolutely beautiful, not getting any money for it, maybe the universe was like, hey, hey, I need you over time here. Time to make that shift. Huh? Time to make that shift. This is what Let's COVID did. What have you learned? Stop bitching and moaning and figure out what do you get to do because of this experience? Who do you get to meet? Who do you get to be? And that is the great test. If you're whining and moaning and looting and thinking somebody owes you something, knock it off. Nobody owes you anything. It doesn't owe any of us anything. Yeah. And those of us who are successful on our own, mm -hmm. we struggled. I mean, I've been hungry. I, I can tell you every single oh. thing you want to know. I've been through it. Yeah. And I'm glad I did because if I was some spoiled little rich kid, you and I wouldn't be talking. I wouldn't be helping other people. I'd be sitting on a beach with my guys because I'd be spoiled and entitled. And I've met those people. In fact, mm -hmm. one of my friends is such a big trust fund, he can't decide which Porsche color to get. And at the end of the day, the truth is he's so damn depressed because he doesn't know what he's doing here. Yeah. I have a friend um, of mine, he's my massage therapist. He won the lottery, won $5 million. Trust me. Drugs and alcohol didn't do him any good winning the lottery. So mm. figure out what you want, figure out what makes you happy and then go get it. And if you can't figure it out, go help somebody else. There's some little kid who doesn't have a mom and dad, who doesn't enjoy Christmas, who nobody celebrates him on his birthday. And I'll tell you what, if we don't love on that little kid, that's the one who's gonna kill you or kill somebody you love or loot your store because they don't feel worthy, they don't feel loved and nobody ever did love them. Because it's got to yeah. happen between the ages of one and seven that you really feel a sense of belonging. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, man, you become mm -hmm. a menace to society and it's not even your fault. 
Yeah. I deal with a lot of a lot of grown-ups who are letting their four-year-old drive their bus. They're so angry that they got left or they got hurt or they got molested. And they're they're living that out the whole rest of their lives. Yeah. So, Wasting life. Another thing that that um this time does, I don't know for me, is it's I'm fighting to live. I'm fighting for to keep going. You know, I'm refusing to now I'm refusing, you know, I talked to you earlier off off uh, before the show about how I was feeling, how I was in, in the really just gloom and doom. But once I took the focus off of me and said, hey, wait a minute, you're blessed to have, you know, a channel on Roku and Amazon Fire and Apple and iHeart. You know, broadcasters, you have 30 people on your network. Do you yeah, realize the yeah. power what you have? Yeah, bring broadcasters together and let's all lift up the world. You don't have to sit there and, and help other people feeling like you. And I think that's what you're saying for us. There's so much stuff that we have and we focus on that and, you know, and focus on what can I do with what I have? If you woke up the next morning, hey, you woke up. And, and unfortunately, a lot of people didn't. But um, I Here's think the it's problem. Kind of like, you know, Here's the problem. Yeah, you know how uh, Les Brown says, how hungry are you? You gotta be hungry. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's how I feel right now. We got to be hungry for life and do what we need to do to keep living. Because if we don't, we're just kind of giving up. Uh-oh, I see you. What you saying? What you saying? What you saying? No, actually, Les is one of my best friends. Um, <laughs> I love that man. Yeah. I'll tell you what. And he's been through a lot. He's been yes. through a lot. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's funny. Most people don't really get it because yeah. they don't hear enough of this positive speak. They may be yeah. hearing it on Sunday, but there's always that caveat. If you're not good, you're going to hell. Whatever. Mm -hmm. How about mm -hmm. Monday through Saturday? If everybody's telling you doom and gloom, where do you listen to? That's one reason I listen to less. And I'm a big one about making lemonades out of lemons. My 60th mm -hmm. birthday happened mid-April, right? We're in the middle of all the COVID craziness. Really amazing. Because I love parties and I hate parties. I don't drink. I don't like people wandering off. I, I'm a kind of a control freak. I don't know. But I'm like, <laughs> and my friends don't live in Tampa, Florida. So I was kind of like last month going, I was kind of bumming. Then I said, no, no, no. I've been Zooming Ooh. for years now. I invited my friends from all over the world and I filled my giant TV with these little faces of people that I grew up with. Les Brown showed up. Elaine Lelaine Jack Swipe showed up. I had a couple of other celebrities. I had musicians play for me. I had Patrick Wilson, the bad guy from Aquaman, was a friend of, a friend of mine. He's, he showed up to wish me happy birthday. <laughs> we had the craziest time. Oh, my God. It, was, it could not have been better. I didn't have to clean up after anybody. There was no alcohol spilled on my bed, my floor. It was... When's your birthday? When was April your birthday? 25th. I am a raging Taurus. I mine was April 12th, and I did the same thing. I had people on Zoom. Yes. My host was on Zoom, and my family was on Zoom, and that's how we did our first day party. I told you we were sisters from another mister. <laughs> Wasn't it great? And you could see everybody. Everybody yes. told me how much they loved me, so everyone else could hear that. It was like a love fest. <laughs> Oh my God, this is perfect. Yeah. So it's perfect for everybody going through this storm? No, it never is. And for those people, I feel bad. But again, nobody was all yelling and screaming when I was dying and my parents were dying. Or my, you know, people are hurting all the time. You don't know that. The fact yeah. that we're highlighting hospitals and we're hearing about this every day is partly what's wrong. Because mm -hmm. if you highlighted car crashes, my Joshua lost two dads to car crashes. His first dad was mm -hmm. killed when he was two. Second dad killed when he was 15. That little boy went through hell. Nobody made news about that. Let me share something yeah. with you. And, and by the way, the second was because the truck driver fell asleep. So maybe you want to protest that the long hauls the truck drivers are doing in the crazy hours took his dad. We're not yeah. protesting about that. So I think there's, I, I don't know, I, I think that we need to dig down deep, figure out what makes us happy. And is the world going to go to hell in a handbag? I don't know. You think they thought that during the Great Depression? I was in LA during the Rodney King riots. I don't know. I think we'll get through this just fine. Human beings are like cockroaches. We're pretty tough. We're going to stick around. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of babies being born right now. Yes, they're all. Well, that's the whole new, but you know, if you go back, history repeats itself. Baby boomers happened during this one period of time. <laughs> oh, have, yeah. We're going to have COVID babies. They're going to be flourishing everywhere. And that will be the next thing. You and I won't live to see some of that. And I do, I do get a little scared for my 17-year-olds because they got a long road ahead of them. Yeah. And the world's changing very fast. And what scares me most is the movies. I have watched The Matrix. I have watched The Terminator. I have watched a lot of these humans 
the never. living dead. What's the one that everybody likes? The they never up. win. Yeah. And the word, yeah, like living dead, if they come back as dead people, that even sucks more. But yeah. for the moment, let's play. Let's have some fun. Let's reach out. If you guys want to know more about me, I'm all over social media. My name I is- I know all about her. She's so cool. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I love talking to people on social media. I answer my own. I'm weird about that. I do Facebook Lives. And I'm on a mission to empower people to find their own greatness. Don't play yeah. small. Don't play small. You, you're playing small doesn't serve anybody. Yeah, absolutely. There she is, everyone. Forbes, Riley, OMG. Don't forget to get her. What it is? What's the Spend name of him. My bro. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. I, I got to find one for you in bright pink. I've got it lying around here. Wait, wait, hang on. Don't go away. Don't go away. Don't go away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to get a hot pink one for sure. And so because, oh, this is a good time to stretch. I like this. Mama, this is bad. You will be amazed. My hot pink is just makes me a heart go. Ooh, ooh. There you go. There you go. That was my mom's favorite color. That's why I like that one for you. Take it like this now. and you make it into spingium jewelry. You can't do that with a dumbbell. <laughs> I know. All right, of course. Thank you so much. We said 30 minutes. We're longer, but you know, we're just having a conversation with you. All of you that are tuning in, you know, please stay positive. Go back and listen to everything that you soaked in during this one day of positive energy. And and uh, Forbes kept it real. I love that because I'm a keep it real type of gal too. And so we don't want to fluff it or dismiss what you're feeling, but we just kind of want to uplift you, make you laugh today. And you can come back to this anytime you want and listen to it. Thanks, Forbes. So, Miss Raven, you have a whole new Raven fan in me. Oh, thank you so much, everyone. Bye, guys. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Okay, so now that we're editing Forbes, give me back the um, screen, please. Uh, you got it. I can't. You have no. to take it back. I have to take it back? Really? If you want to. No, it doesn't let me. Isn't your oh, wait. Hand? Oh, you know what? Actually, if I go here, you, I'm have, sorry. To, you have to cover me. I can hang on. I can give you, make okay. you host. And I'll be right back. Don't go nowhere.